First today, the day-long NATO summit. It has begun in Brussels with 30 NATO allies gathering to deliberate on a wide range of issues. All 30 assembled for a socially distanced family photo. The leaders were then asked to remove their face masks and look at the cameras for a full 15 seconds. After the photo was taken, the group watched a futuristic screen in the centre of the room. It lit up with a video touting the alliance and the clip was accompanied by soaring and stirring music. The leaders were then told to put their face masks back on as they headed for the summit itself. The summit is expected to see President Biden mark a resumption of the United States playing a leading role in NATO. He will be taking centre stage at the alliance's first leaders' summit since the COVID-19 pandemic began. Ahead of the NATO summit, President Biden held a short bilateral with the NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg. Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi said that the NATO summit is in essence a continuation of the G7 summit that wrapped up in Cornwall over the weekend and is part of the process to rebuild US-led alliances that were weakened by the Trump administration. This summit is a continuation of yesterday's G7 and is part of the process of reaffirming, of rebuilding the fundamental alliances of the United States that had been weakened by the previous administration. To think that President Biden's first visit to Europe and try to remember where President Trump's first visit was. We are here for the reaffirmation of these alliances, but also for the reaffirmation of the importance of the European Union in all of this. A stronger European Union means a stronger NATO. Goodbye and good luck. French President Emmanuel Macron, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, German Chancellor Angela Merkel, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, they are all among the allies who were welcomed by the NATO Secretary General. A day after the group of seven nations issued a statement on human rights in China, NATO leaders are also expected to brand China as a security risk to the Western alliance. However, in his opening remarks, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said that there was no new Cold War with Beijing. We're not entering a new Cold War, and uh, China is now not our adversary, not our uh, enemy, uh, but uh, uh, we need to uh, address together as an alliance uh, the challenges that the rights of China poses uh, to our uh, security. Um, NATO is uh, the uh, strongest, the most successful alliance in history. We have proven again and again that we are able to change when the world is changing. Uh, over the last years we have implemented the biggest uh, adaptation of NATO uh, since the end of the Cold War. Uh, we will continue to adapt uh, with the decisions we are uh, making uh, today. So let's get a live update now from FSN's Europe correspondent Lucy Hoff, who is joining us from Brussels. And Lucy, uh, President Biden, uh, in his first comments as he arrived at that NATO summit meeting, uh, really appeared to offer music, uh, I think, to NATO's ears, didn't he? He certainly did, Simon, and I think it's safe to say even his mere presence will be a source of relief to European leaders after this tumultuous four years under former President Trump. Joe Biden today has spoken of the US's sacred obligation to NATO allies, including European nations as well as Canada, and talking of really wanting to strengthen the alliance, boosting its defense capabilities and focusing on that new strategy for the next 10 years, the threats from cyber terrorism, from climate change, as well as uh, developing threats from Russia and China. You mentioned that we are expecting a much stronger line on Beijing in this final communique after uh, the leaders meeting this afternoon. So, I mean, this, this will be music to EU leaders' ears. We've had a series of, of gushing statements from uh, EU leaders as they arrived today. Uh, a really reassuring message from Joe Biden, who has been seeking to reassure allies that America is back, that uh, a dependable ally is once again back in the room, particularly when it comes to Russia. President Biden, of course, due to sit down with Vladimir Putin on Wednesday for talks in Geneva and the discussions over the course of today uh, will very much uh, inform those conversations, particularly in light of that 
biggest buildup of uh, Russian troops at the Ukrainian border since 2015. There was a message from the NATO's uh, chief, Jens Stoltenberg, that uh, relations with Russia are now at uh, their lowest ebb. So many areas of cooperation, a key new strategy to be outlined in terms of how NATO should boost its defense capabilities, respond to those geopolitical threats, uh, and, and look to the long term in terms of looking at transatlantic issues such as cybersecurity and climate change. And Lucy, as they get down to the nitty gritty, I mean, we saw at the G7 over the weekend some pushback and disagreement from some G7 leaders over the vehemence of the language to use in the communique about China. How ready is NATO and, and America's NATO allies uh, to get behind a strongly worded uh, approach towards uh, China coming out of this meeting? Well, you're right, Simon. I mean, we know, for example, Germany is amongst those EU nations that are keen not to sever economic ties with Be Beijing or, or risk them, given the importance of EU-China trade to this region's economy. So whilst there was that very strongly worded statement issued in the wake of the G7 summit in Cornwall, criticizing China's human rights abuses, forced labor in Xinjiang, whether or not that translate to a shift in policy of security and defense, that may be something that comes into some question over the course of the discussions in the coming hours. I mean, notably, Ang Angela Merkel, the German Chancellor, uh, didn't go into much detail when she entered today's meeting in terms of being pressed on the issue of China. Again, uh, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson said there was no need for a new Cold War with China, that there were many areas in which there could be some cooperation, such as climate change, such as technology. So it may be the case that that statement comes under some negotiation. Joe Biden, we know, would like the alliance to take a slightly more hardline position than perhaps some here in Europe are willing to. But nonetheless, we are expecting uh, China to be identified as uh, a, a systemic uh, partner with which there are some areas of cooperation, but also one who faces some threat, particularly when it comes to cyber terrorism. There was a, a note from Stoltenberg today saying that this was not about NATO going to China. It was about China increasingly encroaching in Europe and the need for Europe to adapt to that and to respond accordingly by boosting its technical capabilities, by modernizing its uh, equipment and the technologies available to it in order to respond to that threat. OK, Lucy, we'll get a sense of it in a few hours' time. That is Lucy Hoff live in Brussels covering the NATO summit for us today. Thanks very much for that update.